Hi guys, welcome to this session on specific heat capacity. This is something that is very briefly in P1 for energy, but it's also in P3 for matter. So what we're going to look at is what actually specific capacity means. We're going to look at how to calculate specific capacity. And uh, we're also just going to have a look quickly at some different uses of things with high and low specific capacities. Okay, so uh, this is a question posed to me when I was at school all those years ago. A question I never really thought about until I actually learned specific capacity again when I was a teacher. Um, when you had something like a sponge pudding and you had custard with it and you put it all in the microwave to heat it all up, when you take it out, it's the custard that you burn yourself on rather than the sponge. Why is it? And I never really understood the question. I don't think I'd ever really put a sponge pudding in with custard in the microwave. So that's why it confused me. But another example I've had of this is like when you bite into a pizza, it's always the tomato sauce that burns you. It's never the crust or never the cheese. Why is that? So the reason is to do with this thing called specific capacity. So when you transfer heat to an object, you can do two different things with it. One, you can change its state. So it could be that you melt it or you cause it to sublime or you cause it to boil or evaporate. But the other thing you can do is change its temperature. And um, those details will come on to what we talk about internal energy. But when heat is transferred to, let's go for the example of the sponge pudding with the custard, the energy is being transferred to both of them, but the temperature change varies on what the substance is. So the temperature of the custard would go up more than the temperature of the sponge pudding, which is why the custard would burn you more. Um, heat, therefore, once you eat it, heat transfers at a greater rate from high to low temperature. That's why it burns you. But anyway, why is it that the custard is a higher temperature and the sponge is a lower temperature, despite them being given the same amount of energy? So this relates to specific heat capacities. So um, another example of this is when you are doing capacity. If you had two liquids that you have the same amount of each one, yeah, I couldn't get two stockpile pictures that were exactly the same. Let's say you've got a beaker of oil and a beaker of water, same amount, and you put them um, in a circuit with a heater and you transfer the same amount of energy to each one. Despite giving them the same amount of heat energy, one of them has increased. Uh, in temperature by a greater amount than the other. So why is that? So this is where it comes on to specific capacity. So if we look at these blocks here, I've got some blocks of different values. Um, here is the energy required to change the temperature of one of these one kilogram blocks by one degree Celsius. So aluminium here uh, takes 880 joules per degree Celsius for this kilogram. So if I want to increase the temperature of this aluminium block here by one degree Celsius, I need 880 joules. So what if I have two kilograms? Well, if one kilogram is 880, two kilograms is going to be twice that. What happens if I want to change it by 10 degrees instead of one degree? Well, that's for one degree Celsius. So for 10, it would be 10 times that. So this here, these numbers, are these specific heat capacities for all these different metals. It means the amount of energy you require to change the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Now, the reason why I said change is because if I was heating it, I'd need to supply this energy. But let's say, for example, you had a kilogram of aluminium that was heated to 100 degrees Celsius. If it cooled to 99 degrees Celsius, it should release 880 joules as long as you have a kilogram of it. So if you look at these different metals, they have different specific heat capacities. So if you imagine I have a heater, it's uh, for the same setting for each metal. I plug it in and I put it into each metal and I turn it on for 10 minutes and I take it out straight away and I measure the temperature change. Each one of them would have been transferred exactly the same amount of energy, but the temperature increase would have been different for each one. So I want to look at which one would have the highest temperature increase and which one would have the lowest. So let's say that I gave all of these each 10,000 joules of energy. Now aluminium needs 880 joules per kilogram to increase its temperature by one degree Celsius. Copper and brass need 380. 
So because of that, aluminium will not increase as much because if you do 10,000 divided by 880, you get 11.4, rounded that is to one decimal place. So aluminium needs 880 degree, 800, sorry, 880 joules for one degree Celsius with the change. Therefore, if you only have 10,000 joules, you will only get 11.4 degrees Celsius. If you look at copper and brass, on the other hand, 380 joules per degree Celsius per kilogram. Therefore, if you are giving them uh, 10,000 joules of energy, the increase should be about 26.3 degrees. So things that have a high specific capacity will not heat up as much as something with a low specific capacity. So going back to the old custard thing, the custard has quite a low specific capacity and the sponge has quite a high specific capacity. Both given the same amount of energy, but because it's lower, it needs less energy to go up in temperature by one degree Celsius. So let's go on to calculating specific capacity. Now this is quite nice because this is an equation that's given to you. Although some of these symbols might look a bit weird. M stands for mass, that's kind of straightforward. C is the symbol for specific heat capacity. If you're going to be one of those people asking, why is it C? Why is it not S or SHC? Well, if it was SHC, people would be going, all right, what does S stand for? What does H stand for? What does C stand for? And if you're saying, why is it S? Well, it's because sometimes if you do S, S is sometimes used for distance, and sometimes it looks a bit like a five. So that's why it's C, get over it, it's not going to change. Um, this symbol over here is theta. Uh, theta is temperature. And this symbol, the triangle, which you'll see here and here, is called delta. It means changing. So the change in energy is equal to the mass times the specific capacity times the change in temperature. So beware, you may have to calculate this temperature change. Um, another thing that I'm going to go on about is why it's changing. It's because you don't know how much energy a substance has to start off with. All we're doing is saying, look, this is how much energy is either transferred to it if you're heating it or transferred away from it if it's cooling. Um, energy is measured in joules if you're being lazy, capital J. Um, mass is measured in kilograms. It's the only thing that has this prefix of kilo in front of it. Uh, specific capacity is joules per kilogram degree Celsius and changing, change of temperature is measured in degrees Celsius. This equation is given to you. You do not need to remember it. OK, so here's some practice questions. If you'd like to have a go, um, I'll pause and you can have a look at the answers. OK, so here are your answers. Just a few things to note here. Um, if you're looking at that, that needs to be changed straight away into kilograms. So to do that, there are a thousand kilograms in, uh, sorry, a thousand grams in a kilogram. So it'd be 500 divided by a thousand, which will give you 0 0.5. Do that straight away, one mark. And here, look, um, heated for 10 minutes. Now that 10 minutes there is just a bit of a red herring. It may be useful in other questions, but you've, you do the same thing as usual, uh, change in energy is mass times specific capacity times change in temperature. We fill in the gaps. Uh, 500 grams, so that's 0 0.5 goes there. 34000, zero, zero, zero. just be careful because sometimes they may use a prefix like kilojoules, which means 1000 joules. Uh, the temperature rises by 40 degrees, so we don't need to calculate that. That time in this question is not going to be of any use, but it may be useful in the future. So we take that one, let's simplify this, let's do 0 0.5 times 40 to, to work out what that is, so that's 20. So what we could do is we can get rid of this and we could just say uh, 20 times C is 34,000. So if you divide 34,000 by 20, you should get 1,700. OK, here are some trickier questions. If you'd like to have a go at it, please press pause and then I'll review the answers. OK, so here are your answers. I just wanted to go over one or two little bits. So here. There is a temperature change you need to calculate. There, mass needs to be converted into kilograms. The challenge plus is quite a tricky one. So if we use the equation change in energy equals m times c times change in theta, uh, we have got the specific capacity. It is 840. The mass we've got is 1.5. But we do not know the energy transferred. And we want to work out the change in temperature. So we've got some of the things we've got this and that now let's change that half an hour is 30 minutes and 30 minutes is going to be 30 times 60 seconds 
that there is going to be a thing that's really, really useful. Um, you need to make sure you get in the habit of changing that straight away because you'll be able to get a mark even if you don't have time to answer the rest of the question or you can't. 1,800 seconds. So how can we use these? This is where you've got to dip into your previous knowledge. Um, so power, which is 50 watts here, what is the measure of power, is the energy transfer, the work done per time. So 50 equals work done divided by 1,800. So work done means energy transfer. So you can work out the amount of energy transferred by this heater, which is uh, rearranging it, we times both sides by 1,800. That therefore gets rid of this side. 1,800 times 50, and therefore you get 90,000. So all we now do is we need to put this back into this equation because that is the energy transferred, 90,000. This is a nice little trick they like to do over and over again. They get you to work out power. This question might be worth quite a few marks. Um, it's something you get used to the more you practice. So if we then simplify this, uh, 1.5 times 840 times change in temperature is 90,000. So do 1.5 times 840, and that should give you 1260 times change in temperature is 90,000. And then to work it out, we just got to divide that by 1260, divide this side by 1260 as well. That will cancel, uh, cancel out that. Change in temperature is 90,000 divided by that, which is 71. Um, we're probably looking for two sig fig here because that is the lowest number we get given in these questions, like the data actually given there. Okay, so uh, looking at high and low specific capacity uses. So uh, this is an example of a question I give. So a car radiator, um, they're used to cool down an engine of a car. What liquid do we use and why? Water or oil? Water is really, really useful because it has very high specific capacity, i.e. it requires a lot of energy to change its temperature by one degree Celsius, 4,200 joules around. So that is very good. So when you have something that's hot, you've got a lot of heat to get rid of. If you transfer that to water, the water will store it without increasing temperature very much. Oil, on the other hand, will get incredibly hot, which can be very dangerous because it could catch a light. Um, it could then start to evaporate etc as well if it absorbs too much energy. I mean another good use as well, think about it, if you want something to absorb heat and not get that hot, water is very good, I something very good at cooling down. But then again if you can think of something like, um, let's talk about a metal, metals have relatively low specific capacities, what is a good use of something heating up very very quickly to a high temperature when you transfer a small amount of energy? So things like saucepans, for example, if you put them on a flame, you're transferring heat energy, that will increase the temperature. And transferring a small amount of heat energy will increase the temperature by quite a lot. Now that's good because, as I said earlier, uh, heat will go from an area of high to low temperature. And the bigger the difference in those temperatures, the greater the rate of heat transfer. So if your saucepan or your frying pan or whatever is hotter, it will transfer heat quicker to your food, so therefore cooking quicker. Okay, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed. See you another time.